Hey everybody, this is Wes Corwin. I'm starting a podcast called Wes Corwin as Friends. Let me tell you the premise of it. Austin comedy, Austin comedy podcasts have a lot of cool concepts, but they all go for about two hours, and they all have guests, and the guests don't get to talk. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create like you know you don't listen to Unmasked with uh, Ron Bennington to learn about Ron Bennington. You're trying to learn about Chris Gethard. You just accidentally learn about Ron Bennington. I want to create an experience like that because there are a lot of cool. Austin comedians, and you should be learning about them. You should be—they're like penny stocks. You want to buy into them now, and then pick them up, <laughs> pick them up later. Don't, don't make a sound until I introduce you. You not, sorry, you know, you're just too and, hilarious. <laughs> I can't contain uh, my laughter. Well, on, on, again, the subject is I want to—I want to cover some cool Austin comedians. Got 12 seconds left for this intro. This next guy is one of again. I've I've said this before on stage. He's one of the first people that I became friends with doing stand up. He's also toured through Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh, been featured in clubs in Houston. Please give it up for Cody Greenley. Thank from you your, from your computer. Please give it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Oh, like wait, me? For, I'm sitting by my computer. But do you mean that? Also, all the southern states. We love the slavery states. <laughs> it's specifically where I tour. We do just perform in the slaves. <laughs> That's a thing I, I haven't thought about before until you said it. I've never performed in a free state. <laughs> it's always Mason-Dixon lines, kind of my point, and then I just aim down from that. <laughs> like That's what I do. Oh. Thank you, Wes. Thank you for letting me be on your first podcast. No, absolutely. I'm glad to have you on. How are you, how are you doing, buddy? How's your week going? Uh, so far, it's been okay. It's mm. only, well, fuck, it's Friday. So I guess <laughs> it's... <laughs> Uh, I guess it's been okay. No, but it, it picks up from here. Like, thank God it's Friday. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> I mean, I'm I uh, I have two jobs. We both share one of them. Yes. We both deliver pizza for. <laughs> oh, I probably shouldn't say. Uh, and then. Uh, so on the weekends, I usually work both jobs, so it sucks. I don't get to do comedy or anything or see any of my friends. Mm -hmm. I just eat hot za. <laughs> <So> <laughs> just eat that hot. You, the cool thing is, though, I'm, you, you're boxing out Gaddy's people because I've never had hot za. I've always had lukewarm. <laughs> it's me. when it's like set there for two hours. You're yeah. like, well, I guess they're not coming. Let's <laughs> just eat this. Yeah, exactly. The, we, we do that, and then uh, also... Uh, I want to do this thing. Maybe it would be a good idea mm. if we should just get our friends to call the place and order pizza that we want yeah. and then just not come get it and then we eat it for free. That would be good. That would be a good idea, I think. Mm. Oh, uh, I, 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 we, could, we could talk about pizza for hours. <laughs> but, uh, it's our livelihood, Wes. Of course we could talk. To, no. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I, I guess I don't, I don't – usually when I start an interview with a comedian, I, I, I start with from the, from the beginning – uh, where did you do your first mic? Oh, I did my first mic at, uh, it was the, um, fuck, what are they called now? The Sherlock's Pub. Sherlock's Pub? It's like a bar. There's like a few around, but mm -hmm. before it was Sherlock's Pub, it was the Laugh Stop, oh. where like, uh, that was like a big club in Houston back in the time. Yeah, yeah, Hicks. That's where, and, yeah, Hicks, and, and that's where Lucy C.K. recorded a CD, and mm -hmm. that's where Mitch... Hedberg recorded a CD, mm -hmm. so there's all that history, mm -hmm. and then they're like, "Oh well, let's close it down and make this like shitty bar." Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> so yeah, so it was there uh -huh. at the thing, and it was like a, uh, it was it had three hosts. That's mm -hmm. how long the show went. It started at eight and ended at two, oh, yeah. and I went up at one forty five after man. being there at since seven or whatever. Oh, I have exactly the same experience but it was <laughs> Dallas and Hyenas how did you learn about the mic um I think there was just like some shitty website that tried to list every mic in Houston but it was like not updated or anything like that <laughs> yeah. so uh, I would look into a place find out when I could go and then I would call the place to see and that was the first place that it was like oh yeah that actually is still happening <laughs> <laughs> so it was a journey to do your first mic you had to call up multiple places and they were like no not here. <laughs> right not anymore <laughs> yeah it was that and then well also I think because Houston's comedy scene was like huge in the yeah. 80s and 90s mm -hmm. and then I guess this is like three and a half years ago now it was like dying <laughs> like there was <laughs> There was nothing. There was like one where well, there's two comedy clubs at the time mm -hmm. and nobody could do either one of them basically unless you had been there for five years. Yeah. So you had 
two open mics that you could do when you when I first started there. Yeah, oh. and that was but that was the big one. That was where mm-hmm. all the people that had been on TV went or whatever. Oh. So, and it was awful. There were four people there throughout the whole night. No, it it was like crazy good at the beginning, yeah, yeah. but like you know, four hours later sure. or whatever, mm-hmm. there was two other comedians that I had kind of befriended and then two super drunk like biker guys yeah. <laughs> that were stuck there because it was raining. Mm-hmm. So that was it. Yeah. So, so how'd your mis- how'd your set go? Okay. It was great. I <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I did uh I did a character oh. for my first time oh. where cuz I had uh, recently gotten divorced <laughs> and uh <laughs> and you know like well, you've never been divorced. You didn't know this experience. Basically, you know, you live together. Yeah. And then uh, they move out, so they take all their stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you are both poor and you live in a one-bedroom apartment, like, they have most of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, as I was kind of picking up stuff when she was leaving or whatever, I thought, like, I'd always wanted to try comedy. I just didn't know how. Mm-hmm. But uh, as she was leaving, I was like, wouldn't it be really funny, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. if I, all the jokes that I wrote were like coming from the angle of like literally the most depressed person <laughs> that ever existed? <laughs> and the- <laughs> I'm sorry, I just imagine you sitting by the computer calling clubs, and then as she's packing up, things, hey, let me run this by you. <laughs> right, right. Uh, can we workshop this? I know we can't like have sex anymore or love each other, but. Uh, <laughs> What do you think about this joke? Yeah. Yeah, no. It was like a it was like maybe a 3 month process before like actually going to the first mic from that experience or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then uh yeah, it was uh I you don't know how to write jokes, right? When you uh-huh. start and then also you're trying to do a character which is something <laughs> dumb. So, <laughs> uh-huh. so, but uh hey, I got a couple laughs. So, yeah. hey, that's what's the worst that could happen, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was the uh that was the first one. And then I did like six to ten more mm-hmm. when I lived in Houston, and I just moved to Austin to do it. <laughs> so yeah, you moved to Austin for comedy, or was it for? I didn't tell my family that, but yeah, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, totally. I lied. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's really cool. Yeah, well, it was like uh, that's when podcasts were first starting, yeah. and everyone talked about how great Austin was, <laughs> and. Uh, I'd been divorced. <laughs> All I uh, couldn't trust any of my friends anymore because mm-hmm. uh, my ex-wife got oh. pregnant by my uh, best friend. Yeah. So, uh, and then like, you know, you have a big friend group and it seemed like most of the women were like siding with her, like didn't want to have anything to do with me or anything, even though I was not an asshole at all. <laughs> so... It just seemed like a good time. Like, well, I want to move to a different place. I like this comedy shit. So then I moved to Austin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Is it getting too real for the host right now? No, no. <laughs> I thought the reason was exclusively comedy. And then I was like, okay, I, that sounds like reasons. And then also comedy. Well, it was definitely mostly comedy. But it was like, <laughs> you you know. So if, if the comedy scene in Houston was bustling, if, this, if, you, if your uh, friend had impregnated your wife, in like 1990 yeah in 1990 so yeah like when 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 we were all five (laughs) no yeah when bill hicks was still like if you were in the same yeah i'm sorry i i mean like we're all the same age but rewind back 20 20 years okay okay yeah i i don't know because it's like in the like at the time it was kind of like you know i didn't really like school i had worked at that game developer and everything like that and I didn't really like it and I really liked comedy yeah. so it was like well this is like the place to go if I want to keep doing this because mm-hmm. that's what all the podcasts that were just starting were mm-hmm. kind of saying mm-hmm. but then there's like all these other reasons <laughs> that also like you know made me do it and, so yeah. I mean I comedy is the re- my dream and also all these terrible things. <laughs> right yeah yeah no yeah. no so I just figured it was it was a good move and it, it it's okay. So <laughs> Three out of five. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's my Yelp review for Austin. <laughs> three out of five. Oh, yeah, so that's how long I've been here now. Oh, yeah, three years officially now since it's January. Yeah. And it's been fun. Absolutely. When did you... So, it was that... At what point did you decide you wanted to be... to, Or at least try comedy? Was it that month that you started looking them up? Or was it... Early? No, it was like... Uh, <laughs> 
this is this will get weird like <laughs> sad just, also yeah, and then also we'll flitch. entirely about your divorce <laughs> oh yeah it's no. gonna get weird and sad no 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 well so i well you know wes yeah. that i'm a fairly happy person it, it it's it does it's not a thing that affects no, me anymore don't, don't forget the question but i i do i wanted to put you on because one of the first people i interviewed was Jesse Lopez, who was super angry. And I wanted to, at some point, catch the other side because you are uh, genuinely one of the most zen... Easy, you oh, you are. You very much... Like, the only time I've heard you be mad about comics is when you started hosting uh, Cherrywood. <laughs> right. Because, and, and that's not even established, like, oh, these people are getting spots. It's just new comics are annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's literally like you get a thousand messages <laughs> just for an open mic where a thing you just sign up, put your name on, you still get a thousand messages. Mm -hmm. And I get mad because you get stressed out, like when you're in it, because you're trying to run the show. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, it's literally like, oh, why did I get upset about somebody asking me like a silly question that <laughs> took me ten seconds to answer? It's like not a thing worth being mad about. But in the moment, I'm like, I'm drunk. You're bothering <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm trying to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the only reason I get mad at Cherrywood. Mm -hmm. uh, to go back to the other thing. Yeah. So like, I always liked comedy stuff. Like. Mr. Show was on HBO at the time, like when I was a little kid, and I watched that, and you know, cartoons and everything like that. So I'd always liked comedy. I just didn't know it was a thing that you could actually do. Yeah. And then um, when I was married, my best friend uh, at the time, we were always interested in it. So we would like try to write like sketches or skits or just like because the internet was starting to get popular, sure. like YouTube and everything. So we we're like, oh, maybe this is something we can do. And as we worked on it more, I started doing more research about like stand up, and, and I thought, well, maybe we could write sketches, and then also go do stand up, yeah. and then you know, fast forward, <laughs> like all the stuff that I, that we already talked about, and then it was like, well, oh, I can just do this by myself, like yeah. I can just go to an open mic or whatever, mm -hmm. and so then that's when I started looking them up, you know, yeah. writing all those jokes or like you know, paring down them, and then went to the first open mic. Mm -hmm. Is it when was the first time? Were yours was in hyenas, right? Yeah. Have you? Well, this is the first one, so you haven't talked about it either. No, yeah. Well, so how bad was yours? No, mine was very. Mine was a relatively positive experience. I had a lot of like uh, really silly jokes. My problem when I started out doing comedy was that all my jokes were two minutes long and they had one punchline. <laughs> right. So it it was Another very five. much. <laughs> it was a horse joke experience every time, <laughs> but only the horse joke was self-referential about how long my jokes were, which is why it was the good one. Yeah. All the other ones were like a deep impact reference. <laughs> oh, I made some extreme Ghostbusters references oh. like in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. nobody's into that. <laughs> no. Man. But uh, no, it was... It was like you said, it was. I got there at like six forty-five, and I put my name on the list. I was like the second or third, maybe fourth person to put my name down. Mm -hmm. And uh, then all the comics who'd been doing it for years got there, and they all got to put their name above me. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah, I sat there, and I was I was nineteen, so I couldn't uh, drink. Oh So I'd wow. just been getting hopped up on uh, caffeine drinking. Yeah, Pepsi's yeah, just night. drinking Red Bulls in the back the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it would be like five comedians, and then I'd drink a couple Pepsis, go back out there. I was, I was fucking, <laughs> I was wired. <laughs> you were on amped? Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to get to do comedy, I'm excited. And also, and also you're nervous yeah, and everything like it, that. It, yeah, you're <laughs> just shaking for multiple reasons. Uh, and it was, it was, I, I, the first, like, Three out, three and a half hours of the show were amazing. Everybody was really good, and then that's when things started. That's to get... weird for Dallas, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was. It, I I I love Dallas as a comedy city. Yeah, and then I'm sure it's good. I just like to yeah. shit talk it for no real reason. Oh, <laughs> typical Houston. <laughs> yeah, typical Houston. Typical Austin. Everyone hates Dallas <laughs> in Texas. Like no, yeah. it is. Everyone likes the Cowboys, but everyone hates Dallas. Mm -hmm. I think. I. If I could, like, it, I think Dallas is probably, with the exception of Houston, because Houston is still, like, crashed and then is growing Yeah, now. it's growing again now, yeah. But, it's... like, for a long time, I think Dallas was uh, one of the harder cities to, and is, might still be the hardest, just because it's so established and it has a right. lot. Right, like, it has, like, seven comedy clubs in, like, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and that's, like, 
crazy huge because mm. every place I've been has two or mm. one, like wherever yeah. we've done shows. So Dallas sounds like it would be insane yeah. to get regular work there. It is. It. it I've <laughs> I've heard amazing things from people yeah. that yeah, but um. On the other, on the other side of the spectrum, J T Kelly. I was talking to him, and he was talking about Sacramento and how like all you have to do is start doing comedy there, and then you start getting work. Yeah. And part of it, and he was like saying like, and it created this inflated expectation in my head, like, oh, I'm a pro comic. I opened for Cal Canine. Yeah. And then I come down here, and everybody's really good. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, hard. I respect that experience, but also maybe I should move to Sacramento <laughs> and just start riding that. <laughs> yeah, it's, get on that train. Get on, but um. I feel like, the, but with that mentality, like, yeah, here it's it's harder, but it's making all of us better, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's something I constantly fight with in my head is, like, is it actually making us all better, or are we all just, like, fucking jerking each other off? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's too much, I think, that I've had too many experiences of either going someplace else and doing comedy, mm -hmm. or other people going other places and doing comedy, mm -hmm. and it's just, like... No, they're not like trying that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's very true. Um, as seen when you go to San Antonio, they are <laughs> all four Texas comedy cities mentioned, and now we can yeah. move on from here. Everybody hates El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anything about El Paso. No, neither have I. I really don't know <laughs> anything about. It's an unsaid. Yeah, fact. yeah. We it's all... like our stepchild that nobody <laughs> talks about. It's. He's, he moved out. We don't have to address him. <laughs> if he calls, we'll just hang up. It's fine. Do you, do you let me ask you something else? Because we we're just talking about first uh, like open mics and stuff like that. Sure. Hey, do you notice anything about like people that do good at their first open mic versus people that do bad? Like we've done this like three years now, almost basically. Mm -hmm. Like me, a little over three years, and you probably a little under. What? No, three and a half years. Three and a half years? Yeah, I, okay. I still have a little bit of experience. Like okay, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. But do you yeah. notice, like, because now most of the people we started with are all weeded out, right? Like, mm -hmm. they don't come around anymore. Yeah. Did, did you notice anything, the difference between, like, the people that are still around from them? Did they all do bad, like, their first times, you think? Or did some of them do good, some of them do bad? Do you think it, like, leans one way? One of the things, let me think, I... One of the things that still bothers me is that uh, apparently Eric Nagurney and Brendan K. O'Grady both started out like the same day I did, just in Austin. Yeah. And they, like, and I moved here when I was a month into doing stand up. Okay. And uh, they both, like, I, when identifying the people that were really good in the city, I picked up both Eric and, and Brendan. Brendan. Yeah. And apparently they had been doing it as long as I have and just were, <laughs> we're, really were good, good at it, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. But um, no, it was like, but at the same time, there were people that identified that like, I was like, there's something there. And then there just wasn't anything yeah. there. And, uh, no, totally. There, well, like I had that experience with you because we had basically <laughs> started almost the same time. The first time I saw you at Cherrywood, yeah. the uh, mic I host now for the audience. <laughs> uh, like I thought you were fucking hilarious. Like I thought you'd been doing it way longer than me, mm -hmm. and I was too like fucking shit scared to like go up and talk to you just like a normal person. Like, hey, you're funny. It was just like, oh, he's uh, funny. I'm not going to talk to him for like months because <laughs> I'm scared of him. Oh no, yeah. I that it's the worst thing that uh, that behave. Like I, I'm just a very awkward and uh, introspective person, so I don't talk to anybody. And for a lot, like Chris Duncan doesn't come out anymore, but I like that guy. Yeah. And uh. He thought I was an asshole for the longest period of time. Yeah. Because I, I at one time at Kick Butt, I had a really good three minute set. Yeah. <laughs> right? That Aren't sounds you? dumb. And I was like, yeah, that's part of the story. It's a thing I have to say. Is yeah. That I did well for three minutes. And then Pete, a couple of comics walked up and said I had a good, get, did a good job. And I was like, shaking their hand, trying my best to be like appreciative. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then Chris Duncan gives me a big clap on the back. Yeah, and I like turn I so you can see it from here. I turn back like this, like <laughs> no, with like he, side to the audience. Eye. He is he's turning actually right now. <laughs> and from there, he was like, "Good set," and I was like, "Thanks," but I didn't turn all the way <laughs> yeah. because I was like, uh, "This was sensory you're, overload." You're being mobbed. I, yeah, I was so miserable at fifty first jokes. No one was. Like, it wasn't too many people talking to me. It was too many people talking in general. Like just around. 50, well, not even that. Just 25 people all in the same room, all interacting. And I was like, I'm going to 
hy- hyperventilate if I stay. <laughs> so comparatively, three people addressing me and one coming up from behind yeah. is like I'm. <laughs> it's I'm, like you're I'm, taking I'm, ecstasy. Uh, <laughs> it's just sensory overload. I'm surrounded. Someone get me <laughs> out of here. Well, the uh, I think one of the things that uh, problems I always have, and, and I think I'm getting over it slowly over time, but. Uh, that first open mic I went to, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I'm very zen. I, like, try to be positive and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, and I don't know shit about comedy. Like, I don't know anything about it. Just know that there's this open mic and that's it. And that you have to do this for, like, a long time. That's yeah. all I know. So, uh, I'm kind of talking to people. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just trying to get a lay of the land. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and I talk to a couple of people there who seem nice. And then I go up to this one table of people who don't know anything about comedy but apparently they're like the people that feature and kind of host around uh, around Houston at the time yeah, yeah and but I'm just coming up as this plucky upstart you might say <laughs> just like oh how long have you been doing comedy that type of thing mm-hmm. we're kind of joking around they're being decently polite yeah. a lot of co- kind of a cold sho- shoulder and then somebody makes a joke and of course I try to add uh-huh. and I say something about sucking somebody's dick <laughs> or something like that yeah, <laughs> like sure. some sort of you just sort of warm up <laughs> yeah a nice little thing yeah. and uh, not not like anti-gay at all sure. like not in that way but uh, this is Houston of course so one of them turns to me and goes dude uh, none of us are gay and then kind of oh. like they all you know don't want to talk to me anymore yeah. So then, like, for two years, I didn't talk to anybody, (laughs) like, in comedy, like, most of the time, just because it's, like, oh, it's so easy to get, like, cast out. But now I know, like, you, when you go to open mics, you just hang out with the same people all the time, Mm -hmm. and then there'll be new people that are excited to talk to you because they see you do comedy, but then you're, like, you might not be here next week, Mm -hmm. and also you might be awful at comedy, (laughs) so, and I have investment with these other people, Mm -hmm. and... I think that kind of turns people off of comedy sometimes. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's true. It's a weird gang situation. So yeah. A lot of people joining up and then leaving nigh immediately. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, earlier we were talking about how your first goal in in comedy was to work on sketches uh, with the man that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get away from that topic. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's just... It, 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 like, uh, we did that, yes. Yeah. And then now, like, whenever I talk about, like, comedy or things that I work on or yeah. what I want to do, I, like, hate sketch comedy. <laughs> like, hate sketch. it's... I, like, there's good sketch comedy shows on television, yeah. but I never have the, like... I can't find it within myself to sit down and watch a whole episode of, like, The Kroll Show. Oh, sure. Or, like, I love Key and Peele. That show's hilarious. But I'd rather just watch, like, the best of clips mm-hmm. on, on the internet or whatever. And oh. I feel like the the way the internet is, it kind of broke sketch comedy for me in my brain. Like, I don't need to sit here for 30 minutes and watch all the ones that you wrote. Mm-hmm. And some are good and some are bad. Like, SNL. Like, mm-hmm. I can just literally go watch the digital short. And that's yeah. it. That's yeah. all I have to experience of that. No. Yeah. I was... I was uh, for the longest time, my favorite sketch group was uh, Whitest Kids You Know. Yeah, those guys were great. I and, loved them, too. And I'd watch it, and then I'd be like, oh, they have a TV show on IFC. And then one time I got to watch it going over to a friend's house. And it's like, these are just the internet sketches, but you just put them, <laughs> put them all together. End. Why yeah. did you... Right. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But um, So it was... Uh, yeah. But that's the thing that made me like kind of start writing comedy, was Whitest Kids You Know, and like, um, who were those guys were... Donald Glover used to be in it. Oh, oh, it was, uh, oh my god, Derek Comedy. Yeah, Derek Comedy mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, uh, like the bro rape sketch and all that yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. we wanted to do stuff like that. That's and that's when we started writing stuff. And that really, uh, that surprises me though that you hate sketch because I was, I was gonna ask, like, now you're advertising Cherrywood via some sketch comedy oh movie. yeah every week yeah. i do that yeah. yeah so so you still hate sketch? <laughs> <laughs> it's like i mean i hate a lot of things about sketch comedy and there's a lot of bad sketches sure but of course there's good ones like yeah. and it's the same thing like i make a video every week i force myself to do it yeah. and i'm like 70 percent of them are garbage probably <laughs> <laughs> but i make myself do it and every once in a while there's a good one no yeah you put like it it's fun to watch at first it just seemed like an and then you started putting a little bit into it you've you've had a guest star in one and chris sebelia <laughs> yeah TNM yeah i'm tonight's chris Sibelia. right it, yeah. sometimes i would just drunkenly ask other comics at another open mic like yeah. hey you two just want to stand next to each other <laughs> <laughs> and talk about this yeah but every once in a while you know if i have time or forethought mm-hmm. 
because usually it's all done on my lunch break. So <laughs> I'll literally clock out mm -hmm. at HEB mm -hmm. and then uh, be like, oh, okay, I have to make a sketch today for Cherrywood tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll sit there and smoke a cigarette and think about it for 10 minutes. And then like, well, I have no good ideas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I'll just shoot something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll have to upload it to all the Facebook groups, which usually takes more time than it took me to come up with an idea and shoot it is just posting it to Facebook from my iPhone at work in the parking lot. So, uh, so sometimes I'll have a good idea and I'll think about it. And then other times it's just like, um, there's a box of beer. Let me just shoot that for a little while. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. But it, it is fun to do. Like, mm -hmm. I understand why people like sketch and it's different than stand up because you can work on it with other people and shoot it and edit it and like, like a little movie. But <laughs> Most of them are bad. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. You, is... Do you like sketch? Like, is that something you want to do? No, I'm a, I'm a big fan of sketch. I mm. I made a sketch with uh, Blake Bowles and uh, Joel Watts, and it's 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 not good. Um, <laughs> I was really proud of the script, and when I told people about the script, it was that uh, that. Uh, Jesus needs to get off the couch sketch I told you about that idea yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a long time ago um, it turns out a, skits, a six minute sketch is really hard to keep people invested in right yeah six minutes is forever like yeah. that's especially it has to be like hitting really hard I figure yeah so we're, we're in an editing process we're cutting out uh, some, uh, uh, some Mary material which I was told to like uh, Kat Ramzitsky was going to play the original Mary and then Avery Moore both said uh, it's funny, like, this is going to be a six-minute-long sketch. You need to cut out some of this Mary stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the was, people that were going to play yeah. Mary were like, cut, cut me um, out of this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, it's going to be good. And now it's super long. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm still happy with the end, but it... Like a problem I've always had in comedy is it's a it's a lengthy <laughs> for one it's a lengthy stroll to yeah, that end to one dumb like yeah this is clever and then, well, yeah <laughs> right and I feel like that's definitely a big difference between sketch and stand up is in stand up it's like you almost get immediate payoff for yeah. everything you do you write the joke you say it a couple of times it works it doesn't you drop it mm -hmm. sketch is like you write a script. You rewrite it. You show it to other people. You get cast members. You have to get a production crew together. Yeah. You have to film it. You have to edit it. And then you've seen this thing so many fucking times before you actually get to make it that you're probably tired and sick of it. Oh, yeah. And like it could be bad. And like that. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just too much work. <laughs> Maybe that's why I hate this sketch. We're we're uh, running a touch low on time, but I really wanted to cover before we uh, uh, depart what. You you're you're a big fan of, fan of dark jokes about oh, yeah, love really them. really dark things. Where did did that did that come from? Where did where do you think that come like? Uh... Oh, um, hmm, that's a good question. I guess the uh, the general idea in my brain that I have about it about like why they tickle tickle my <laughs> fancy so much yeah, yeah. is like um, so like every joke that anybody writes or whatever you know there's always kind of like a victim to mm. it like in self-deprecation it's yourself and yeah. like other jokes it's other people and then uh there's a certain amount of reality that i think a lot of people don't accept like it's one thing to uh, see something bad in society mm -hmm. and be like oh i want to like help that person right <laughs> yeah. and that's good and totally right mm -hmm. uh and that's what you want. Yeah. But if you are accepting that that is like the minimum, like like we we're saying where where I'm Zen, like I want I want that. I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. Then I think it's real funny to twist that the whole ninety degrees and be like, well, let me like shit on this thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that yeah. is so like low, mm -hmm. like like you know you're supposed to like punch up, I guess, in comedy. Like sure. that's a common thing, yeah. and I kind of like accept that as a rule. But it's like. If you can get really out there, <laughs> like if you're gonna make a really weird out there joke, like mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like really fun to shit mm -hmm. on, like Indians. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. That's my favorite thing about that ice skating joke I do is that I take an eight year old girl and then I elevate <laughs> her above me in economic status so I can punch up. On it. It's really it. Like I, I I feel like you do a similar thing, but I I look at the limitations in people's tastes, and yeah. I, instead like 
other comedians that get frustrated and like say like no I I need to punch down yeah it's, it's what's funny to me but I I I like working this I I like observing the rules that are like you have to punch up and being like okay who can I put above me right so I can fire at them. <laughs> right yeah yeah well there is that I think some people feel so like trampled on mm. that it's like they they have worn out the ability in themselves to punch up. Because oh. they almost feel like they're not worth doing it. Mm -hmm. So then they just punch down and it makes it even worse and like more sad. Yeah. But like doing like a dark joke about something is like when you write a joke like that and you perform it and you like actively try to do that, there's certain things that go on, I think, with like an audience. Like if the dark joke is really good, it's if it hits really hard, it just is a thing in their brain where you override their ability to awe at something sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's it's like doing a joke like at two times power. <laughs> like that's what it feels like to me. Like when you can just like some jokes I tell, obviously they get awes or people like, you know, kinda get upset and mm -hmm. I try to smooth that over. But then sometimes if the crowd is kinda into it and then you just like fire one off at them and it yeah. just like breaks them <laughs> they, really, they laugh really hard oh, fire it off and it and it breaks them yeah. that is, we are out of time okay <laughs> but that that's exactly what I want to close on yeah is do, do you want to say why you like dark jokes oh absolutely I I'm so used to uh, crowds that like last night I was in San Marcos uh, at Wake the Dead Coffee House and it was this like terrified nervous crowd yeah and it's it's this thing where like i'm terrified and nervous all the time right so i like appreciate and want to connect with them but they're like the other side they're it's like wanting to connect with people <laughs> like me so they're a little nervous and distant right so it becomes well, also you're on a stage talking to them through yeah. a microphone yeah. so even if you're projecting scared and sad towards them like hey we're on the same level it's, it's like good. still like well i'm the chief of <laughs> i'm the king of this group <laughs> So at that point, it, like I got a little bit abusive, and I stuck to my dark material. And my appeal there is, it's uh, oh, I'm aware that it is this uh, kind of it's it's this grade school like boy likes a girl, so he starts throwing sand in her hair. <laughs> like if yeah, if like I I know you say like you try to smooth out the awe, but like if it's if it's quiet for all the other comedians, like polite, and then I get a huge awe, it's like yeah, they feel something uh, right, for me. Yeah, no, exactly. Now I can channel it into love. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It's like the uh, it's like that abusive part of the relationship where you. have <laughs> battered someone <laughs> and then they feel a stronger connection with you afterwards <laughs> oh. no i totally get that no i'm i'm really glad we did the podcast for another minute because that's what i want to <laughs> uh but uh of course the uh the our guest today was cody greenley uh he hosts cherrywood open mic every Tuesday at 9.30. You should come watch it. Cody. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what were you going to ask? What are you doing other shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, um, I have uh, the late slots at the Velveeta Room mm -hmm. on February the 13th. Mm -hmm. I have another show that I am desperately asking people to come to. Mm -hmm. Is a, It's a like a, a kind of a messed up thing. But basically, I have a spot for a show at Spider House, and I'm going to book some fantastic stand-up comedians. I'm going to host the show. Mm -hmm. You're on it, Wes, because I want only fantastic comedians. But uh, I don't know how I'm going to get people, audience members, to come. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just hoping that anyone that hears this, please come. It's going to be fun. Yes. A lot of stand-up. Mm -hmm. It's great drinks. I love the, the bartenders there. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I think that's all that I can remember off the top of my head about what I have. Oh, and at Cody Greenlee on Twitter. At Cody Greenlee on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you can you can find my my show stuff uh, at West Cornfield. Uh, I I I love you. <laughs> Thanks. For... Is this on Tumblr? No, no. This is... <laughs> uh, good goodbye. <laughs>